Shall you bear being told that I want the cabin when I wish to be alone? If we treat each other this way, I hope we shall suit. If not, possibly we should wish each other at the devil. I should regard the cabin at all times as yours. Good. There must be a thousand questions you're waiting to ask. There's just one immediate point. My father is somewhat worried about the cost. Well, 500 pounds ought easily to cover your preliminary expenses. That's settled then. You mean tomorrow I shall drive you down to see the ship? The vessel looked so beautiful, even a landsman would have had to admire her. If I had known then the tortures I was to endure from seasickness, once she was no longer safely tied to the quay, I might not have regarded her with quite such innocent and admiring eyes. But on that bright morning, the beagle seemed to me to represent the very essence of excitement and adventure. Two hundred and thirty-five tons, ninety feet overall, beam, twenty-five feet, nine-foot draft, and a crew of seventy. Same quality as yours, nevertheless. There is handsome a second hand pair as you'll get anywhere at that price, sir, I assure you. There's rust in that muzzle. Hey? I think it's dust, sir. I think he's right, Miss Roy. I, I said there was rust. Well, if it is, I, I can always replace it, sir. Miss Roy, if you don't think these are good enough, take them. Take them. I greatly admired Fitzroy. He was devoted to his duty and indomitably energetic. But I was soon to discover that his temper could be highly unpredictable. Strong stuff, sir. Captain Talbot refitted the officer's mace from the war spite with it, sir. It's too thin. Captain Talbot only had to replace a few pieces of it, sir, when you get back. I should have purchased all of this, had you not been so disobliging. That's why the whole ship's stuffed with crockery. You showed me. We don't need more crockery. Are you doubting what I said? I suppose I am. Yes. Yes, you're right. I acted wrongly in my anger at the blackguard. Let's get back to the ship. Well, these are the square inches the captain has allotted you. Hmm. We haven't got any more of your size, thank goodness. There's only one other cabin that would fit you, and uh, that's the captain's. Is that the only single cabin aboard? Well, he has been known to share it. Yes, with Jemmy Button, our last trip. The native? A native. He taught him to speak English. You know they'll be uh, traveling with us again, the three natives. Yes. He's had them educated at his own expense. So 
turned them into loyal Christian subjects. We even presented a Buckingham Palace, Fitzroy's prize exhibits. What does he intend doing with them? Found a Christian colony. In Tierra del Fuego. No, that's... Yes? I don't believe you've seen these. The finest set of chronometers ever possessed by any ship of this kind. So many. It greatly reduces the margin of error. I need to know our position with absolute accuracy at all times. None of these must be allowed to stop until we bring them home to Greenwich to be checked. In three years' time. God willing. By the way, I have something for you. Lyle's Principles of Geology, just been published. I must confess, I haven't read it myself yet, but uh, I hear it spoken of most highly. I'm overwhelmed. I only wish I could have thought of something for you. There's no space in this ship for showering each other with gifts. I understand I am to dine with you. Yes, yes, you'll uh, mess with me every day. Well, I can. And I'll take my batty as well as any man. You will, Davies. You will. Delay Davies' punishment until we've anchored in the sound. I don't want to make it a public spectacle. What's the name of the other man? Uh, Bruce, sir. Is he drunk too? No, I'd say not, sir. Davies was definitely the instigator. Very well. 24 lashes. And tell the boatswain to go easy. Aye, sir. Uh, are we fully provisioned? Fresh water and salt beef came aboard today, sir, and a Mr. Earl arrived with the London Mail. Rather a lot of baggage, I'm afraid, sir. Brushes, canvas, pigment and the like. Well, there would be little point in taking him with us without his painting equipment. I hope he won't prove too troublesome. We'll fit him in somehow, sir. I'm sure you will, Mr. Wickham. So, we can take her out with the morning tide. No reason why not, sir. If this nor'easter holds, the sooner we're away, the better. We will be gone three years, Mr. Wickham. One day will make a trifling difference. Yes, I know that, sir. But a brisk start will do us all good. Especially Davies. We haven't sailed before, Mr. Wickham. But I'd like you to know I'm glad to have you as my first lieutenant. Thank you, sir. On the eve of our departure, I was troubled with palpitations and pain about the heart. And like many a young man with a smattering of medical knowledge, I was convinced that I had heart disease. I did not consult a doctor in case he pronounced me unfit for the voyage, and I was resolved to go at all hazards. Yeah. 